And here we are again, 2024, another year gone. Berserk has grown another four episodes this year, in the form of the continuation. Here's the current hiatus chart, the one originally made by Protart but updated to reflect the Mori and Gaga releases to the present day. I couldn't find one so I cobbled it together in Photoshop. Crazy that it's already been a few years now, but we already have a rough basis for the release schedule that we can come to expect from Studio Gaga, and a few new details in the interviews and magazines to gleam here, and ask ourselves once again about the future of Berserk. In the very first 365 days from the beginning of Studio Gaga's run in June 2022, we received a volume and a quarter. I thought at the time that would mean we were in for a volume a year on average. I thought that would give us seven years of Berserk due to rough statistics that Miura gave us about progress, and corroboration from Mori when talking about knowing the rest of the story. But now that we've gotten four episodes in 2023, it makes me think twice. Seven years sounded right, but if we keep on with less than half the output, that changes things. In terms of story progression, set pieces are gliding in and out, with characters' dialogue getting us from point A to point B in kind of bullet pointy ways. Not strictly a bad thing at all. The real showcase for development here has been Studio Gaga and their ability to not just do effects and the floor, but to get better at drawing the cast and try to maintain the impossibly high bar that Miura set. Yoshimitsu Kurosaki is the lead artist at Studio Gaga, Hideki Sugimoto did the most recent fold-out posters, and then we have Akio Miyagi, Nobuhiro Hirai, Noahide Nagashima, and Shigeru Kinoshita, with Koji Mori helming the direction of the story in general. But in a more recent interview, it seems his role is a little more hands-off than I'd originally thought. He details how he sent the story into Hakusensha, as complete with as many details as he knew, and then, with each release, he oversees the manga that Gaga creates and sometimes voices further direction, in terms of draw something this way instead of that, or phrase it that way and not this. It was easy to imagine Mori there in the studio with them all the time, but this interview seems to pit him as more of a producer and having a much more passive role. So it's quite hard to distinguish where Mori's influence starts and ends, what details may have been inserted by the team for stuff like ease of readability, and what level of involvement Haku Sensha themselves may have when it comes to production of the manga. These are all massive variables in terms of what to expect for the future of Berserk, both story and output-wise. What have the other staff said? Well, Kurosaki confirmed a chapter was done just over a month before it was released. This was before 375 came out. As for Berserk Chapter 375, it has already been completed, so I think it will be published in Young Animal soon. This was October 9th, and while the episode would release on November 10th, not long after at all, we should take this comment to mean that Hakusensha solely decides when to release episodes, and the staff themselves are fully removed from that process. He believed it would come out soon, and despite that product being done, this magazine releases fortnightly. So it was held back to two magazines of Young Animal from completion, and what's more important, there was no certainty in his statement, only that it was done, as though they send it off and their relationship with the product ends there. We know once in the past that Hakusensha split one of Miura's chapters as well, into two 10-page chunks, and now we know it's fully up to their discretion to hold chapters back, release them differently, and this even gives them the potential to create artificial hiatuses. We know that all of these staff work at Gaga in full-time positions, so going from seven releases in 2022 to four in 2023 is an interesting decline. Obviously, they hadn't started it before June of 2022, so if we just make that the starting point, we get to that volume and a quarter statistic I brought up, with nine releases in the span of 365 days. So if we're looking at progress, starting from June or halfway through the year, we only have two right now, and until June 2024, we would need seven more releases to match the output of the first 365 days, which would require one release a month and another release squeezed in between one of those months. There's also the idea that they used an undisclosed amount of time in the nine month gap from Miura's death as a runway to make those first releases in such rapid succession. But if that's the case, does that mean we should go back to expecting no more than four releases a year? If we don't set 365 as the starting point, then they released seven times in 2022 and four times in 2023. We could never prove the existence of an artificial hiatus, and I still don't think it's happened yet, but between now and 2025, I want to see if I can predict where the releases might fall from a business standpoint. 
And maybe you're thinking, from a business standpoint, doesn't it make the most sense to just keep releasing Berserk regularly, as it's the best-selling manga in Young Animal? That is correct. However, the tap will eventually run dry when the story is told, so it's in their best interests to release Berserk financially at just the right time throughout the year. Christmas isn't too big a thing in Japan, it's not even a public holiday, but weekly Shonen Jump sales show a sizable increase, so let's say December, we're gonna get a chapter. Working back from that, Berserk might bring sales up on a slump month, February's too short a month, so I'm gonna say March is the next chapter that we'll get. Then I'm gonna go with a summer month, August, and then October. So March, August, October, and December. That's obviously just another four chapters, but I wanna revisit this in the future of Berserk 2025, and keep doing it every year just to see if we can see any correlation. If artificial hiatuses start being made, the team could be multiple chapters ahead of the current release, and Hakusensha could be holding them back for the most profitability. In this interview, Mari says about how he has a rough idea how many episodes and volumes are left, but then also says about how Miura hadn't fully mapped out the path to the ending, and that he'd been struggling with how to fill in those gaps. It's a bit of a panic-inducing thing to say, when his announcement for the continuation stated that, of course, I know the full story of Berserk. The real worst-case scenario, to my mind, is that the decrease in production time is a direct result of not being able to figure out what these important plot points are. Like, that brings us to the realm of George R. R. Martin, Patrick Rothfuss territory. I think the biggest and scariest hurdle to overcome is addressed in this interview by the chief editor, Akira Shimada. When talking about if something like Berserk's continuation had ever happened before in the past, he says, I've never heard of it, and I think this is the first time. Berserk sales have gone through the roof since Miura's passing, usually increasing by about 5 million every other year, and now it's going up by 5 million every single year. That's just domestic amounts, by the way. In terms of internationally, the numbers have similarly shot up, going from turning in an extra couple hundred thousand sales to over a million international sales through Dark Horse. This information I found through Skullknight.net, where Az in particular has done an incredible job compiling and archiving information. So in the past year alone, at least six and a half million sales were made for Berserk. The exhibition has moved from Toshima, Tokyo, to Osaka, to Nagoya, to Ginza, Tokyo, and more recently to Sapporo. The fact that the exhibition has been going for multiple years, and the series is still going strong in the sales department, hopefully means that they keep it up, and maybe even go international with it. In terms of Mori, his main priorities are finishing his manga, finishing Berserk, and finishing Mori and Ken, the series that details the friendship fully between Miura and himself. It's the first I've heard mention of that memoir since Miura's passing, so it's good to hear that it's still being made. He goes into just how much he was affected by his passing in more detail than ever before. In one of his final conversations, he was shocked that Miura hadn't gotten around to seeing The Mandalorian. As we know, he was a big fan of Star Wars, with Yoda Puck and Jar Jar Pucks popping up here and there. But Mari says how the death of Miura was such a shock to him that he is now unable to watch anything Star Wars anymore. He says how he dropped from 85 to 73 kilograms, which is over 14% of his body weight. The road ahead isn't that much clearer than it was this time last year, but even with just four episodes advancing the plot, it is better than nothing. Hopefully this year brings more clarity to Mori's mind, more development to Studio Gaga's staff, and more episodes to get Miura's vision down on paper. You can really tell how much the reach of Berserk has taken off. The subreddit has blown up, with a follow-up account that really shows how big the community is now, and it has been propelled by the sadness that Miura's passing left on so many. It's why the continuation exists. Sometimes, even now, I think about a world where Berserk just ended forever. Roughly translating this interview, Mari talks about knowing the ending, and obviously, the guy has been through a hard time, but the manner of his speech is still excited when he talks about that ending. It's hard not to share that excitement, especially when the only thing stopping us is a declining release schedule. That's what the focus seems to be for Mori in this interview. And yeah, some things are hit or miss, but we will get there. We'll just have to stick it out and hope that this year is a more productive one for the team. What did you think of the past year and the slowing releases? Comment your thoughts down below and thanks for watching this video. Thanks to my patrons and have a good night.